Hi, and thank you for watching. Over the past few months, the world has seen many developments clearly referred to in God's Word. Nations are rising against nations, and all-out war would not only seem to be on the horizon, but it could also ignite at a moment's notice. Russia and Ukraine have been battling for more than two years, and NATO countries are now getting involved by supplying Ukraine with weapons that Ukraine are allowed to use to strike Russia. Ukraine has thus far destroyed three long-range radar systems in Russia that are used for the early detection of ballistic missile launches. Not only is this a serious provocation from NATO's side, but Russian nuclear doctrine states that nuclear weapons can be used when Russian defenses of this nature are attacked. Russia has now positioned forces in Cuba, which is only 90 miles away from the US. And when using apps such as Flight Tracker, we see many doomsday planes and nuclear bombers in the air on a daily basis now. It is not only the conflict between Russia and the West that is of concern, but tensions are rising significantly between China and Taiwan, and between North and South Korea. And all of these conflicts would seem to be converging to a point where one would expect World War III to break out between various nations, and given the enemy's signals with regards to the timing of this, we know that their plans are showing that the kickoff of the most devastating events this world has seen are about to occur. Jesus specifically pointed out the events leading up to this point in Matthew 24 and the other Gospels where the following is written. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. We are also seeing another prophecy being fulfilled regarding Israel, which is now being isolated for the war that it is conducting in Gaza. And this aligns with what we read in Zechariah chapter 12. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. With Israel being brought before the International Criminal Court concerning their conduct in the war in Gaza, this passage from Zechariah has never been more applicable than now. Over the past four years, we have witnessed everything that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24's introduction coming to pass. The deception that he mentions at the beginning of his answer to the disciples is of course clearly linked to the pandemic that started in 2019. For those who are not familiar with this, I have covered this in several of my previous videos. Those who are responsible for fanning the flames of evil in this world have also been showing us their plans ahead of execution, and we will look at some of these today, especially as they apply to the events that are now playing out before us. It is also quite evident that everything playing out before us is scripted, and we have seen many instances in which what would seem to be predictions of the future turned out to be very accurate in more than one instance. An excellent example of this can be seen in the cartoon series The Simpsons, creators of which would seem to be very familiar with future events, and portraying these in the animation before they actually happen in the real world. I've also discussed how they are doing this in this video. One example that I would like to point out having to do with the time that we currently live in is an episode known as Homer Goes to Prep School. In this episode, there are some who are preparing to endure the end of the world, and some interesting details are shared in this episode that point to events that have made the headlines in 2024. Keep in mind that this episode was released in 2013, more than a decade before the events that are now playing out before our eyes. In this scene, a prepper is showing Homer information on a tablet, and some of the words that appear should be very familiar to those who live in 2024. In this image, we see the words, no local farming. We know that traditional farming has been one of the main targets of the green agenda in recent months, and specifically in Europe. There have been several protests against governments who want to do away with occupations that provide natural food to the population over concerns, that these activities would have a negative impact on the environment. 
Well, farmers in eastern Idaho are going out to their fields this week and finding red tags that look just like this. It says, attention, this diversion has been curtailed until further notice by order of the director of the Idaho Department of Water Resources. This is an issue that affects all of us here in eastern Idaho. It's become a very uh, talked about issue over the past few weeks. We've had farmers calling us. Farmers have been calling Frank Vandersloot, the executive chairman at Melaleuca. It's kind of a complicated issue. There's a lot of facts and figures here, and, and it, it boils down to what? That is really a tough deal because these farmers have already planted. The timing on this is horrible. It costs $2,000 an acre to plant potatoes, or more, 2000 to 3000 um, And now they have to shut down the wells and give up that investment. Their, their, their land is mortgaged, the potato crops are mortgaged, everything's financed. They, they will basically lose their farms if they turn their water off. Something that is really mind-boggling is the fact that some of these people, who were also heavily involved in events that unfolded during the pandemic, want to rid the world of trees. I don't use some of the uh, less proven uh, approaches. Such as? Uh, I don't plant trees. Uh. A lot, there's a lot of people who are very enamored with trees. We've got trees on this stage. Some people would even say that if you just planted enough trees, it could take care of the climate issue altogether. And that's complete nonsense. Okay. <laughs> I mean, are we the science people or are we the idiots? I, which one do we want to be? Uh... <laughs> now, everyone with two working brain cells knows that trees absorb carbon dioxide and in turn produce oxygen. How would the world become more habitable if the oxygen converted to carbon dioxide in other living organisms cannot be converted back to oxygen again, when all the trees are missing? Such a landscape would match that of Mars, where there is no atmosphere and no oxygen. But for some reason, there are those who believe that they will do the world a favor if they could break this cycle. Then we have solar flares that are mentioned, and over the past few months especially, Solar activity has been in the headlines of many newspapers. Earth-directed flares and CMEs have produced some of the strongest geomagnetic storms that the world has experienced in decades, if not in the past century. I believe we have also not seen the end of these and there is more in store for the world in the coming days. Finally, we see 17-year cicadas, which in 2024 has a particular application as it is not only the 17-year cicadas that have emerged, but also a 13-year variety, both emerging at the same time. This episode of The Simpsons aired in January of 2013, and one has to wonder then, how did they know that these events would feature in the headlines of 2024? Or is this all part of a plan that they are following to the T? One of the most prominent predictive animations that I have covered several times on this channel is iPetGoat 2. This animation was released in June of 2012 and concerns events leading up to the emergence of the Antichrist. We have seen how this animation predicted the pandemic, which was mostly fear-driven, and that fear was mainly being propagated through the media. This is not the only animation that depicted this, as one can find several other instances in which this is also shown to us. In this screenshot from a music video by the group Disturbed, a virus-shaped camera collection seems to be at the center of the media's focus. When it comes to the CV-19 pandemic, many warnings have been provided to the public, but one of the most prominent ones that have played out before our eyes, just as shown to us, comes from a series Utopia, which was first created in the UK, and this version aired in 2013. In 2020, the series was remade and released again in the US and it contains one of the most prominent warnings to the public concerning events that have transpired in the world over the past four years. Please listen carefully to what is shared. You, you used me. You used my flu. You desecrated all of my work. You disrespected science. What the hell did you put in that vaccine? Did you hear how they claimed that Mr. Rabbit disrespected science? Watch what happened during the congressional hearing where Dr. Fauci, one of those responsible for the substances that were injected into people, was questioned about these actions. Mr. Fauci, you were quoted on CBS Face the Nation saying it's easy to criticize, but they're really criticizing science. 
because I represent science. Do you represent science, Mr. Fauci? I am a scientist who uses the scientific method to gain information. Yes, and you said you represent science. Do you represent science, Mr. Fauci? Yes again, or no? It, yes or no? No, that's not a yes or no answer. Yes, it's a yes or no. I don't think it is. And what a hypocrisy this picture shows. Here you are without your mask, with empty seats everywhere. Remember the cardboard cutout fans? That was one of the most insulting things to Americans, having to watch the games from home where you got to go and enjoy the game and sit right next to people, not following the six feet of distancing, not wearing your mask, and everyone else was forced to stay home and stop enjoying life. And your science here, your science is displayed perfectly in this picture where children children in school were put in plastic bubbles because of your science your repulsive evil science i guarantee you have no idea what it means it means he's mr robin he created a flu that sparked the demand for a vaccine that doesn't work after everyone in the country is vaccinated and the world he'll have murdered millions nope nope you don't have it give a certain percentage of the population a fatal illness and you make sure it's genetic See, that was the exciting part. You pass it down. So if you have children before you die, how much evil do you have to do to do good? None. The answer is none. None evil. And now we have exactly what we want. Hundreds of millions of Americans lining up, offering us their arms, and letting us give them our creation. I'm pretty sure when every vaccinated person starts dying, they'll trace it back to undetectable virus or not. Tell me this. What have you done today to earn your place in this crowded world? Exactly. Everything I do is a cure for our current situation. We intend to stop human reproduction for three generations. The busy, endless global assembly line of babies will grind to all. New data from the CDC shows U.S. birthing rates hitting a record low with roughly 76,000 fewer births last year. It is the lowest one-year count since 1979. You're sterilizing people? Uh-huh. In the first five years, we'll start to see major birth rate declines as teenagers vaccinated today hit their childbearing years. We are saving ourselves from ourselves. Halting overpopulation. hundred years ago, the global population was 1.7 billion. 2011, it reached... 7 billion. People live too long, die less often. In 2050, they say it's going to plateau. Mm -mm -mm. We'll blow past 11 billion and then slowly begin to decline. Global warming mass extinctions, food, water shortages. All these problems can be boiled down to one thing, overpopulation. The iPetco 2 animation also shows that after the pandemic, a point will be reached where the markets will plunge, and this coincides with war coverage that follows. And we have certainly seen an escalation in tensions between various nations over the past two years. It will also seem that this animation is hinting at a specific time that will soon be upon us when World War III will break out. And I would like to look at that in a little more detail next. In the classroom scene, we see Lily sitting in a circle representing a solar eclipse. We know that the solar eclipse of April 8th was very significant and that it had a partner in 2017 which drew a cross over the USA, as if this was a heavenly sign crossing out the United States. The path of totality of the first eclipse in 2017 passed over seven cities named Salem, and during the April 8th eclipse, seven cities named Nineveh were positioned close to the path of totality. If the April 8th eclipse is the eclipse shown to us in the iPetco 2 animation, and it could also be pointing to a different eclipse, and my understanding could be wrong, but if it is, then some events follow that we can compare to events transpiring in the world telling us where we are on the timeline. When darkness descends, Lily drops the apple. From what was shared by the creators of this animation, it seems that the apple is connected to Israel, more specifically Jerusalem, especially when we consider events currently impacting God's chosen nation. 
Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Over the past few months, Israel has become more and more isolated and we have seen an increase in the number of nations turning their backs on Israel and recognizing Palestine as a state. This, of course, will require God's land to be divided and a portion assigned to the Palestinians as their rightful property. God's word specifically declares Israel to be the land given to Abram's descendants through Isaac and it is an everlasting covenant that God made with Abraham. If this covenant is broken, it will be God's enemy trying to break a covenant that God said would be everlasting. One can only imagine the consequences for those who would attempt to break a covenant that God said He would keep forever. And the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant." In the past week, a resolution proposed by the Biden administration passed at the United Nations. Even though Israel agreed to adopt the resolution, Hamas rejected it once again, and it would seem that a full-scale war with Hezbollah would be next on the menu for Israel. In iPetco 2, Israel or Jerusalem is represented by the apple that Lily holds in her hands, and the creators specifically state that Lily is holding an apple that belongs to someone else just as we read in Zechariah chapter 2. When Lily drops the apple, it rolls over a floor until it reaches a shoe that stands on a coin, clearly pointing us to the end of money as we know it. It also passes a C and a 7 that is painted on the floor, and in a previous video we saw that the logo of the G7 summit in 2023 consisted of a C and a 7. This year the G7 summit started on June 13th and ends on June 15th, already underway at the time of this video's posting. When the apple splits, a water lily forms, and this is also the birth flower for the month of June. So if we interpret these images as they apply to 2024, Israel's division would occur shortly after the G7 summit, and these events would seem to be associated with June of 2024. If they do not apply to 2024, we may have to wait for a subsequent year if our understanding is incorrect. We see the same message shared with us in this scene where the Antichrist emerges into the open and water lilies appear around him in the water as he steps into the open. There are 15 water lilies that appear around the boat in the water, once again pointing us to the end of the G7 summit in 2024 that will end on June 15th confirming the message shown to us in the classroom scene. There is also this scene in which Israel, represented by an old woman, is shown behind bars, and the intent of the International Criminal Court would seem to be putting Israel and its leaders behind bars for the war that they are conducting in Gaza. I will not show the entire scene that involves this old woman, as it is quite offensive. Something else that happens almost at the same time as the G7 summit is the peace summit that will be held in Switzerland where Ukraine will attempt to say peace, peace, when there is no peace, just as explained in Jeremiah 6 and 8. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall, in the time of their visitation they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree, and the leaf shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. 
Could this peace summit be Paul's reference to the peace and safety that will be proclaimed when sudden destruction occurs? For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. In this scene, as tanks are driving through a carcass, reminding one of a whale, and providing a possible reference to Jonah, we see how a peace flag is raised when death and darkness enters the scene. We also have the top of a bear's head on the ground, facing the head of Mickey Mouse, associating Russia and Ukraine with this war, as well as a yin-yang sign that may point to the conflict between China and Taiwan, and this also playing a possible part in the events that are about to transpire. There are just too many specific coincidences between what is shown to us in this animation and real-world events currently playing out before our eyes for us to ignore or to dismiss this. That is why I'm sharing this with you. It would seem that the world is right on the edge of a cliff and that very little time remains before that edge begins to crumble and gives way. Coming back to the Antichrist on the boat, when he is out in the open we see how the church behind him crumbles and how the barbed wire that bound his head disappears. And this of course points to what is written in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where the removal of God's church from the earth is associated with the removal of the restrainer and the appearance of the man of sin. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved." In the closing scene of this animation, the Antichrist looks at the sun where concentric rings emanate from it, reminding us of the many earth-directed solar flares that have been erupting from the sun over the past few months. Remember that this animation came out in 2012, and it is very interesting to see how all of what is shown to us would seem to form part of a script that determines events in a movie that is playing out before our eyes. On Israel's calendar, Shavuot, or Pentecost, occurred on June 11th and 12th, but we also know that the calendar that they use today is a lunar calendar, and in the Book of Jubilees it is stated that the fact that they have adopted a lunar calendar would lead to confusion about the dates on which specific feast days occur. Now, although the Book of Jubilees is not currently included in the Biblical canon, it used to be included in the very early King James Version of the Bible, but was subsequently removed. And I believe the reason for this is the additional insight that books such as Enoch, Jasher and the Book of Jubilees provide to those who would like to understand the Word of God better. For interest's sake, I will share this passage from the Book of Jubilees in which this error is pointed out. For I know, and from henceforth will I declare it unto thee, and it is not of my own devising, for the book lies written before me, and on the heavenly tablets the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the feasts of the covenant, and walk according to the feasts of the Gentiles, after their error and after their ignorance. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year ten days too soon. For this reason the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony, and an unclean day a feast day, and they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. If Israel's feast of Shavuot occurs ten days too early in 2024, as stated in this passage from the book of Jubilees, then that would mean that the correct dates would fall on June 21st and June 22nd, and this falls on a Friday and a Saturday, and one would expect our Heavenly Father to remove the restrainer from this world on a feast day, and even more so if the removal of the authority given to the church occurs on the same day 
that it was given to them after Jesus' ascension into heaven. Wouldn't that be amazing? Those who are planning to collapse the economy have shared their intent to start the process on a Friday, as seen in this clip from an X-Files episode, and also mentioned by a member of the FDIC in a board meeting that they held some time ago. The takeover of America. By a well-oiled and well-armed multinational group of elites that will cull, kill and subjugate happening as we sit here it's happening all around us the other shoe waiting to drop it'll probably start on a friday the banks will announce a security action necessitating their computers to go offline all weekend digital money will disappear they can just steal your money followed by the detonation of strategic electromagnetic pulse bombs to knock out major grids what will seem like an attack on america by terrorists or russia or a simulated alien invasion using alien replica vehicles that exist and are already in use an alien invasion of the u.s the russians tried it in 47. there's a lot of questions here um, and so, you know, there, there are a lot of things we've been thinking about and what we want to hear from you today is what, your pro what you think would the priorities would be in order to go about setting expectations appropriately in public about how we would execute Title II so that if and when we do have to have that announcement on, on Friday night, ideally Friday night, um, that people are in a position to receive it, understand it, and say, yeah, that works. Um, and we can see how this will happen. Of course, there will be doubters, but there's a lot of things going on. But I don't think you have much hope of, of reaching a public that doesn't have a professional need to know. I, I completely agree with that. I almost think you'd scare the public if you put this out. Like, why are they telling me this? Should I be concerned about my bank? Like, my insurance company doesn't tell me what they're doing with my assets. So they just assume they're going to pay my claim, right? It's, it's, I, I think you've got to think of the unintended consequences of taking a public that has more full faith and confidence in the banking system than maybe people in this room do, <laughs> that we want them to have full faith and confidence in the banking system. They know the FDIC insurance is there. They know it works. They put their money in. They're going to get their money out. So there, there's a select crowd of people that are in the institutional side. And if they want to understand this, they're going to find a way to understand this. There's a bunch of law firms represented in this room. There's a bunch of people that will charge them by the hour, a lot of money to explain this all to them. And, and, and it's fine. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. And they all have huge staffs. But I would be careful about the unintended consequences of starting to blast too much of this out in the general public. All the events that we see getting ready to play out in the world would seem to line up exactly with what we are shown through the enemy's predictive programming. I have never seen so many matches occurring all at the same time, and I expect the next two weeks to be very eventful and even extraordinary. I would once again like to share a slideshow with you that was placed in a British newspaper, The Telegraph, in 2009 where another instance of predictive programming is shared, involving the same specific dates that we covered today. This slideshow is titled Operation Blackjack. The narrative of this slideshow, that I will close with, is often encountered in entertainment media, and another example of this was shared in a 2006 TV series titled Jericho. The week between June 13th and June 22nd would in my opinion be the highest watch window we have ever had to keep our eyes on for the rapture of the church to occur. Many do not believe in a pre-tribulation rapture and God's word affirms that there will be many who will only realize when it is too late that they missed out on their opportunity to escape the judgment that will soon be coming over the world. For those who do believe in a pre-tribulation rapture and who would like to be found worthy to escape what is coming over the world, I would suggest watching this video if you have not seen it yet. Also, for those who would like to see how the Bible clearly shows us how there is in fact more than one resurrection event at the time of Jesus' return, I invite you to watch the series that is linked in the description below. I hope this information has blessed you as we watch for the soon return of our Bridegroom. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, God bless. The first notable aspect in this slideshow is the date associated with this operation, tying in with the timeline as presented in the iPetco 2 animation pointed out earlier.
Notice the sunburst emblem on the drum containing the bomb, which is the same emblem that is in the center of this image advertising the Utopia series. Can you see that the same people behind the Utopia series and the information conveyed in it are also the people behind this slideshow? In this image we see how this person is given the hidden hand symbol of the Master of the Second Veil in Freemasonry. And once again it is a signal that we often see associated with what is happening in the world right now, and the people responsible for what we are currently living through.
Here I have to interject again to show you another cryptic video in which some of the information addressed in this slide would seem to feature again. This is also a warning to those who live in the areas where they plan to detonate these nuclear devices, to run away before this happens, believing that by doing so, they give the unsuspecting masses fair warning of their evil intentions. The same warning with regards to running away is also given in Utopia, and I will show that at the end of the following clip. Let me give you all a little perspective. The key figure in a massive global world changing, I'll use your word conspiracy, a conspiracy that has already taken the lives of several hundred children this past week alone, is sitting in your living room and you're all standing around listening to me talk instead of running away from me as fast as you can. Instead of running away from me as fast as you can. This is a very important slide to consider because two important aspects stand out. The first is that those who put these slides together are telling you to your face that the jab is an implant and that those who take the jab will now be tracked and traced and have become part of the beast system. The jab is not a precursor to something that will at some point become the mark of the beast. It is the mark of the beast. 
This is the same message given in the Utopia series, that if you have the inoculation scar, it is underlined in blood that you have become Mr. Rabbit's property. What is this? Oh, the inoculation scar. A gift from your father. No. He was protecting me from you, your virus. Not protecting. Testing. On you. You won't be having any children. No, my dad loved me. My dear, he didn't care about you. At all. Jessica, this should be underlined in blood. You belong to me. It is also very interesting to consider that in the slideshow, the initial plan was to introduce these implants after the nuclear attacks, and yet, we see that at the time of making this video, close to a billion people have now received their tracking devices and have allowed their DNA to be altered by the enemy. This early deployment of the Mark of the Beast is prophesied in the Word of God, just as it is currently happening. And it provides those who have stepped into our enemy's trap with a glimmer of hope. Because a legal case can now be made against our enemy Satan who has begun stealing from God's harvest before the appointed time for him to enter the field has arrived. If you have not seen my previous video on the legal case against the enemy, please use the link provided in the description below. This slide predicts the censorship that we are currently seeing where the truth is attacked from all sides. It is no longer possible to freely share the truth with others on popular social media platforms. This slide shows us that we are not even close to the kind of restrictions that will be enforced in the coming months where it will be illegal to publish anything without having received approval from the authorities to do so. When these draconian measures are implemented, there will literally be zero truth to be had from any media source. In this slide we see the intent to expose those who are behind these false flag attacks and this giving rise to the reactionary movement that Albert Pike described in his plan for three world wars. This is an excerpt from that plan. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization. I'm of the opinion that when this point is reached the lies will finally be exposed for what they are and the man leading this charge will most likely be the Antichrist. Notice the mentioning of an illegitimate and corrupt government on this slide. I am sure you will agree with me that what has happened in the USA since November 3rd of 2020 and which would also seem to be happening right now in Israel, which fit in perfectly with these statements.
I find it interesting that the slideshow has five parts to it and that the final part is called the finale. And yet, when this final slideshow ends, it does not read the end, but to be continued. In my opinion, this also shows that the slideshow is not where this ends and that there is a future application of what had been shared here. Now, I do not know if anything will happen between June 20th and June 22nd, but it is certainly worth keeping this on one's radar because the time frame shared in this slideshow would seem to match the time frame shown in the iPetco 2 animation. Whatever the case may be, our time remaining on the earth is short, and soon Satan will be cast down to the earth to rule over the earth without restraints, and you do not want to be here when it happens. I hope this video has encouraged you, and that it will give you new hope as we look ahead to what could possibly happen in the coming days. Please remember to subscribe to my channel on alternative platforms should this platform be taken down. Links are provided in the description below, and also join me on Telegram, where I will do my best to post updates daily. We are told to watch for our Saviour's return, and although we cannot tell with certainty whether this will turn out to be the day or not, we can certainly keep our eyes on it with great expectation, even if it turns out not to be the day. Are you ready if this is indeed the day? Are you ready to meet your Redeemer in the air? And what will He say to you when this time comes? Have you represented Him faithfully and truthfully to those around you? Or have you presented our Redeemer in a bad light to others, telling them that he is a cruel man or a thief who gathers where he did not sow? We would seem to be well on track to see this timeline play out as anticipated, but only time will tell us if it is true or not. If it is not, we keep on considering possibilities at which our Redeemer may come back for us, as that is what he instructed us to do, and what an honor it is to live in a time where we have already seen so many end times prophecies fulfilled. Just think about it. Soon, those who belong to Jesus will be removed from this earth and will experience heaven and everything that Jesus prepared for us in our new glorified bodies. All pain, anguish, hurt, sorrow, sickness, wickedness, lies, agony, loss, regrets, shame, sadness, insults, injury, and all the evil that we deal with on a daily basis here on earth will forever be removed. Never again will we experience any of those aspects as part of our eternal lives. And God's love, joy, glory, and His light, and His gift of everlasting life will permeate our beings forever and ever. Who would not want that, and who would not be looking for the earliest opportunity at which they could enter into God's rest, that He prepared for those that love Him?